What's up everybody, GenX Dividend Investor here. In this video I explain why you shouldn't focus only on dividend stocks, even though I do. But before I get into that, I wanted to first tell you about a funny thing that happened to my wife before we went on vacation. So she was packing all of our stuff and felt the urge for something sweet, so she drove to a Baskin and Robbins and walked up at the counter and asked the teenager that was working there for a scoop of chocolate chip mint on a sugar cone. But the worker girl responded that they didn't have chocolate chip mint. My wife was like, it's right there, and she pointed to it, and the worker goes, that's mint chocolate chip, not chocolate chip mint. <laughs> Needless to say, I lol'd when she told me that story. Anyway, in my last video I told you guys about how I was going on vacation. Here's the clip I took of one of the countries we went to. Okay, so hopefully you recognize that as Scotland, and specifically it was Edinburgh. It was super foggy for most of the time we were there, but when the weather cleared up it looked like this. Now my channel members knew I had gone to England and then Scotland, because all along my trip I was sharing pictures with them, from cool things I saw, to funny things that happened, to some of the interesting food and drinks I had. Like this is a picture I took at the Museum of Natural History in London, where my wife saw it and said, hey let's go look at that horse. And she wasn't kidding. <laughs> Feel free to join my channel membership if you want to support my channel more, as well as see all the pics I took. Joining my channel membership also lets you vote on which thumbnails I use for my next video, and lets you watch my videos a day or so before I release them publicly on YouTube, and you get a special badge by your comments that levels up over time. Anyway, the idea for this video came from me wanting to warn people not to chase dividends for dividends sake, even though all I invest in are stocks that pay dividends. So why would I do something that I don't think you should do? Well, one reason is because I don't believe you copying me will always be in your best interest, because your goals, needs, risk tolerances, and timelines for returns are probably different than mine. And besides, I'm just some rando on the internet, not a licensed professional. But I do love dividends, and one reason I do is because of what happened to me when we were traveling 125 miles per hour on a fast train from London to Edinburgh. Specifically, I got an email notification from my dividend spreadsheet product that told me that some new dividend cash had just come into my account. It said I should have just received 2,463 US dollars of cash from Enterprise Product Partners, an oil and natural gas pipeline company which is a master limited partnership, all going into my taxable account. We actually just added in that ability for my spreadsheet product to email you when your dividends should be paid out, but we haven't rolled that out to everyone yet as we're still testing it. Now one cool thing about my EPD position is that its cash distribution is basically 100% tax free for me for the next 5-7 to seven years, i.e. until my cost basis gets to zero. Basically it does a return of capital distribution, which isn't considered taxable income, which is one of the reasons why I've enjoyed owning EPD so much. I had never actually owned an MLP until I got EPD, and while my research indicated that it would be tax free for years, I didn't know that for sure until my CPA finished my 2023 taxes and it worked out basically like I had assumed. And in fact taxes are one reason why it might make more sense for you to avoid dividends. Like I know that MLPs work better in a taxable account for me, but if I held them in a retirement account then I may owe taxes on them. Specifically, if the income you get from an MLP in a retirement account is over $1,000 annually, then it may be taxable due to something called unrelated business tax income. Or even if we were talking about qualified dividends in a taxable account, then that counts as taxable income and can slow down your returns. It depends on your situation. Of course, most dividend stocks held in retirement accounts avoid the taxation issue, and if all your income comes from qualified dividend stocks in a taxable account, then you may be able to avoid taxes as well. Bottom line, dividend taxation may be another reason why you shouldn't focus on dividends, unless you understand all the trade-offs. Now, if I wasn't retired and I didn't need income now, then I wouldn't invest in EPD or anything like it, because I doubt its total returns will be great enough even though its income should be good, which is why it's okay for me, but probably not for you. I say probably not because when I look at the average age of people who watch my videos, only about 4% of them are 65 or older, which tends to imply that the far majority of you guys probably haven't retired yet since the median retirement age in the USA is 63. Now I'm in my early 50s myself, though I did retire a few years ago when I was in my 40s once my dividend income was more than my family's expenses. And even after almost 4 years of living on dividends, my mind is still blown by how awesome it is to own companies that can pay me part of their profits in the form of a dividend without me doing anything for it. That's part of the beauty of being an investor. Of course, it took me a lot of effort to get to this point. Another reason why you might want to avoid focusing on dividends is if you have a tendency to spend them rather than reinvest them. I'm at a point where I'm more focused on capital preservation and income generation rather than becoming wealthier, but you might not be at that same spot. 
And speaking of becoming wealthy, take a look at this cash flow quadrant created by finance author Robert Kiyosaki. He says that most people believe that the key to wealth is getting a good high paying job, but he also says that the type of income you generate is more important than the type of work you do. He divides income into four categories which he calls cash flow quadrants. According to Kiyosaki, the first two income categories on the left column, i.e. employees E and the self-employed small business owners S, are usually dead ends on the road to wealth. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I get his perspective. In the E category, employees generate income by agreeing to do work in exchange for a salary. They have a boss and a paycheck. Kiyosaki says employees choose the E category because they value security and certainty. Traditional thinking says E category jobs are stable because they offer steady income and a clear job description. But there are downsides. Kiyosaki says the biggest disadvantage of an E category job is lack of control over your own work. And the E category is where most people are in the world. Many people seek out E category jobs because they enjoy work that they can only do in the E category. So like professors and researchers, chefs, teachers, etc. all make a salary and often attract people interested in that particular kind of work offered in the E category. I'm no longer in the E category, but since most of you probably are, then your taxation realities can change the math on if dividends in a taxable account are ideal for you or not. In the S quadrant, small business owners and the self-employed are their business. They're their own boss, and they can also be the boss of other people, but without their labor, expertise, and management, their businesses can't run. Their income is the profit from their business. Kiyosaki says people choose the S category because they value security and excellence in their work. According to Kiyosaki, people in the S category see it as the most stable way to generate income. The other two categories, big business owners B and investors I, are often the most conducive to accumulating wealth because those are the categories in which you can develop passive income in the form of assets. The B category is for big business owner, where you can own a system and people work for you. And I stands for investor, where money works for you. I'm mostly in the I category myself. Kiyosaki's idea is that to achieve financial freedom, one should aim to generate income from the B and I quadrants. So he says your goal is to move from the E and S categories into the B and I categories, or at least add the I investor income to your existing E or S income. He says you gotta let your money work for you rather than you work for it. To Kiyosaki, money is time and time is freedom. The more money you have, the less time you have to spend working for it. Being in the I quadrant, I really appreciate the fact that I'm an owner in a company rather than having to be a worker in them. I mean, I don't need to commute to work and participate in meetings and talk to angry customers or experience supply chain issues or deal with hiring and firing or whatever. And instead, as a shareholder owner, I just get to sit back while the hardworking employees at my companies create and sell their products and services. Now, don't get me wrong. I worked white collar jobs for around three decades, all the time also investing. So I've put my time in. But still, it's beyond incredible to me that I can just relax now and do things like sit on a speeding train, enjoying a gin and tonic while watching the Scottish countryside shoot by, using the train's Wi-Fi and watching my kids get to eat surprisingly yummy food on the train. And my dividend cash just keeps pouring into my accounts. I've configured my taxable account infidelity to automatically transfer all my dividends directly into my checking account, so not only am I on vacation, but I'm also seeing my checking account balances grow instead of just shrink. In fact, on the day after I got my EPD cash, I got another notification email telling me that I got $3,474 in dividends from AbbVie, Colgate Palmolive, Realty Income, and Procter & Gamble. Realty Income is a real estate investment trust, which has had some tough times as interest rates went berserk, but long term I think they'll do just fine, and in fact they recently did one of their multiple dividend hikes they usually do each year. I've dealt with managing fiscal real estate rentals before and I'm so grateful that I don't need to deal with the stress of leaking plumbing or roof issues, broken HVACs, tenants that lose their jobs and get divorced and suddenly can't afford to pay and blah blah blah. Even when you have property managers I've found that fiscal real estate is not my cup of tea, though it can be a great investment that I recommend everyone consider and it can have better returns if you put in the time and are okay with the extra stress. I personally prefer stocks, which I believe will keep paying without me doing anything and which can keep paying my wife and kids without them having to know anything, even if I'm not around. So in just two days, I got about $6,000 in dividend distribution cash. These days, I make a little over $10,500 US dollars a month in dividends on average, which is about $172,000 a year for my Canadian viewers. Feel free to watch a video I just did called My Most Dividends Ever in One Day, where I show you all my tickers in Fidelity, as well as tell you about my background and such. Now, outside of vacations, my family leads a pretty frugal life. Our expenses are low, relative to averages, and part of the reason why I splurge on vacations has to do with the fact that I've had some pretty crazy life and death health situations, so I really value any time I have being able to build new lasting memories with my family. My health and family realities cause me to put a premium on true passive and sustainable income, but your situation is invariably different than mine, which is another reason why you might not want to focus on dividend stocks like I do. 
Like I have sporadic recurring amnesiatic episodes of varying duration, and these issues make it sometimes that I can't even figure out how to log into an app, let alone remember what stocks I have or remember how to sell stocks or which stocks I should sell or how much or whatever. Thus, the more automation I get from truly passive income that just keeps flowing in, the better it is for me and my family. I'm currently making more money than my family needs just with dividends, so I'm giving a lot of my social media profit to relatives who are struggling financially, and I give some to charity. I've configured my merch to automatically donate some of its proceeds to St. Jude Children's Research, and I include a link to St. Jude donations in all of my video descriptions if you feel generous. My primary motivation for growing my social media is to show my kids how to build an online business from scratch, plus I'm a lifelong video gamer so it's just fun to see all my stats go up, whether I'm talking about income or number of subscribers or whatever, but I'm not doing it for money. Anyway, another reason why you probably shouldn't focus on dividends is because many great companies don't pay dividends. I mean, I own Amazon on my kids' accounts, but I don't own it anymore in my accounts. Well, I guess I technically still own some Amazon until my kids are adults, as kids don't take ownership of custodial accounts until they hit 18. Anyway, once I transitioned into living just on dividends, then I slowly got out of my non-dividend paying tickers. But it's probably not prudent for you to do that. I mean, why miss out on great non-dividend stocks? Note, I do think you can still do fine just owning companies that pay out dividends, but I still wouldn't limit yourself to them. And remember, you can always manufacture your own dividend by selling shares manually. Moving on, another reason why you might not want to focus on only on dividends is because you might be someone who has a tendency to invest in super high yield stuff, stuff that might not be quality or sustainable. Very risky investments often have a higher chance of going belly up, whether we're talking stocks or altcoins or whatever. Another reason you might not want to focus on dividend stocks is if you aren't willing or able to put in the research that it takes to be competent with investing in single stocks. Like if you don't know what a payout ratio is, then you probably shouldn't be investing in a stock that has a dividend. You probably don't want to invest in REITs or BDCs or etc. if you don't know what the pros and cons are of them, as well as how to assess them. And if you aren't willing to understand the basics of how different stocks are taxed, then you probably shouldn't be investing in them either. I don't say all this to dissuade you from investing, but instead to influence you to learn about what you're wanting to invest in, as well as to stress why single stocks are a harder path to success. You need to understand a company's business, its trends, its probable future growth implications, its competitors, etc. For me, investing is both my passion and hobby, so I've spent the time and continue to spend the time to become familiar with how to analyze companies, how to value them, etc. So folks on dividend stocks works for me. And even if you are comfortable researching, the reality is that the far majority of people will probably do a lot better if they avoid single stocks altogether and just invest in broad market ETFs like VTI or VU, which is another reason why you shouldn't focus on dividends. But if you are serious about owning some individual tickers, then I strongly recommend you consider getting a subscription to FastGraphs. It's a super easy tool that helps you gain insights into if a stock is overpriced or underpriced, as well as shares some helpful data on what its future growth rates may be, all of which I found to be invaluable. FastGraphs actually does a lot more than that depending on your subscription level, but those basic functions alone are worth the price of admission, and is why I pay for it. I actually like it so much that I reached out to FastGraphs to be an affiliate for them, which is the first and only time I've ever done that. I mean, I get requests all the time to sponsor things in my videos, and I turn down 99% of them, so when I pitch something it means I'm using it and I value it, and it would be something I'd recommend to my friends and family. If you do want to try FastGraphs, then consider using my affiliate link and my coupon code in the description of this video to get 25% off your first payment as a new user, even if you sign up for a full year. No tool is guaranteed to be perfect in what it shows you, but FastGraphs is awesome at what it does. So TLDR, don't go with single stocks like I do, but if you do want to, then at least give yourself the advantage of using a relatively inexpensive tool like FastGraphs to help with buying and selling decisions amongst other things, because making a better investment decision can materially increase your returns over the long term, and I'd wager it will pay for itself multiple times over throughout your investing lifetime. Anyway, a reason I like to focus on dividends is tied to what Warren Buffett recently said, as did his late partner Charlie Munger. Specifically, this article I just read said that Warren Buffett predicted America's incredible period was coming to an end. That's a somewhat surprising statement from a man who has been famously been ultra bullish on the US economy. But persistently high inflation and interest rates and the ongoing banking concerns have all made Buffett more concerned about investment gains in the year ahead. His late business partner, Charlie Munger, echoed the same sentiment, get used to making less, Munger said. And even JP Morgan anticipates slow growth for investors. They forecasted that 2024 will make investors worry or even panic based on what may happen. Now the reality is no one knows what the future may bring, but historically it has been shown that during down years or decades that dividends are one of the best forms of returns, especially conservative blue chip stocks that I like to invest in. I'm confident that I'll keep getting paid even if the market crashes 50% or whatever, and that lets me sleep well at night and not stress at all about what the market is doing. But I recommend you be more like Buffett and less like me. I mean, Buffett doesn't actively seek out dividend stocks, even though most of his investments pay dividends. 
The reality is that something like 80% of the S&P 500 pays dividends, so you'll probably end up with dividend stocks regardless if you try. Part of why I focus on income generating dividend stocks can be better understood if you watch this 30 second clip of a new channel I watched while I was on vacation. It just showed up in my feed, probably because I was watching some expat videos of people who had moved to other places around the world even though this guy isn't an expat. He's an office worker in Japan and has a YouTube channel named Ask Japan. Take a listen. Hi, today I would like to talk about my feeling. I'm really worried about my future and I don't know what should I do? I'm 50 years old, a typical Japanese office worker. So the reason why I am feeling I'm really worried about my future is this. So this is my chat summary explaining myself. So I'm 50 years old now. I just turned 50 years old now, the other day. He goes on to explain that he'll have to work into his 70s in order to pay off his mortgage and to help raise his two young kids and care for his parents amongst other expenses, and bottom line he's really worried. He doesn't feel like he can get promoted to make more money and he's not sure how he's going to make it, so I can understand his fears. I have multiple relatives who have not planned for their retirements and they're already struggling to make it. Plus my nasty health issues could really turn things upside down for my family. Bottom line, I feel for people who will need to work until their 70s. I mean, whether you lose your career options due to your age or due to health issues or whatever, you gotta find ways to generate income so you aren't always trading your time for money. And if you think that your retirement is an impossibility, perhaps because you've never invested or whatever, then I want you to realize that there are always options out there. Take a listen to this expat named Chad Forrester who's moved to the Philippines. My hope is that as you watch his clip, it causes you to realize that your retirement possibilities, regardless if you have dividends or not, may be better than you think. So I'm chatting with my brother last night and he's just telling me how much he's struggling to, to get ahead and to feel like he has control of his life. And I'm sitting on the other end thinking, man, he makes pretty good money. Like he makes good money. He wants to come out here. Like he wants to come to the Philippines and I'm doing all these amazing things. And he's like, man, I don't have two pennies to rub together after all of my expenses. This is a common thing in the West. It has gotten so out of control as far as cost of living there. There seems to be this big change over the last several years in terms of just like overall quality of life, overall happiness, tension in the air. A lot of it is in the US, but other countries too, you know, political stuff. And there's no wonder there's such a movement right now of people of all ages trying to find a way to get out of that situation. So I know a lot of you guys are at that age probably where you're just looking at retirement, maybe you're right there or maybe you're a few years off and you're watching videos like this and others and you're getting excited about the possibility of actually having a retirement, which most people can't even afford to do if you don't leave the US or Canada or UK, whatever, because it's so damn expensive. And so the Philippines and other countries are becoming hotbeds for foreigners to come and either be a digital nomad and continue to work, work online, or retire. Now many people who are retired in the US rely mostly on social security for income, but I prefer to take things into my own hands and thus I invest. I have enough risk tolerance that I'm willing to go 100% into stocks, even though many experts say that you should own your own age in bonds. Thus that's another reason why you might want to go down a different path than me, i.e. one that aligns to what the experts recommend. Sometimes it makes sense to take the advice from others and sometimes it doesn't. When my family was in the UK we often took the tube, aka trains, to get around, but we also tried public buses and took some Ubers as well. From the Heathrow airport to our hotel we got a black taxi cab, but later I realized that Ubers were about half price so I stuck with them. Speaking of Uber, I often like to chit chat with my drivers to see what their story is. Like is Uber their full time job or is it a side gig or what? And then invariably I try to steer the conversation to investing as my goal is to get everyone to invest. I usually explain how the best piece of advice I ever got was when a coworker convinced me to start investing when I got my first job out of college, and now about three decades later I'm so grateful that I listened to him. I mentioned that most people don't invest, but those that do often wish they had started sooner and had invested more. I also say that some people chase hype stocks at the moment and they often panic sell out of the market when things crash, but the smart investors just keep dollar cost averaging into broad market ETFs for the rest of their lives, and if they just keep doing that then decades down the road I'm confident they'll be wealthy. Usually by the end of the ride I'll have managed to get the Uber driver excited to start investing and I try to explain that investing shouldn't be rushed into and that it really should be treated as something they do for the rest of their life. 
I actually had a similar discussion on the plane ride back home, where I ended up sitting next to a few college kids who were nursing students who had done semesters abroad in London. The young guy I was sitting by asked me what I did for work and I explained I was retired, and he said I looked too young to be retired and what had I done in life to be able to retire early, and so I explained that it all came down to investing for multiple decades. By the end of the flight he was also stoked to start investing. So bottom line, whether you choose to focus on dividends or not, I hope you'll invest. And with that I'd like to close things out and I'd like to do a shout out to Slow Homer who just grabbed one of my Patreon aristocrat seats. And don't forget my Fast Graphs affiliate link, and check out my Seeking Alpha affiliate link as new users often get distinct benefits for signing up. Finally, take a look at joining as a channel member, or check out my Patreon to see if it has any seats you want to join up for. Whatever you do, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click the bell notification. And don't forget to join my free Dividend Discord chat server, which has over 11,000 dividend investors on it from 81 countries around the world. Thanks for watching, stay positive, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor and my videos are for entertainment and inspirational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I'm only sharing my opinions with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.